Hi, I'm field agronomist for South Central Minnesota, Jay Zilski, and, and with me today is uh, Agronomy Innovations Manager, Ashley Storby, who she's also my podcast partner on our Your Field at Our Office podcast. Thank you for joining us for this fifth in our uh, summer webinar series of uh, planning knowledge, growing success. In today's episode, number five, uh, we talk about corn rootworm feeding assessments. And it couldn't be more timely considering what's taking place out in the countryside over the past week to 10 days. And so on today's video, we're going to talk about how to collect samples from the field and how to evaluate for signs of corn rootworm feeding. And then how to utilize your visual observations of the, that root injury to guide you as far as trait selection. And then looking ahead to the future, how do you use the traits and technology and all the tools available to you to manage corn rootworm pressure in the future. Absolutely. So as Jay mentioned, this is a great time. We're recording now today on Monday, July 14th, and we have numerous reports of rootworm activity in the form of rootworm feeding, where it's become evident that there has been pressure in those fields because of root lodge corn from wind events, helping illuminate to us where some problems are in the case of wind events. That isn't always the case. And sometimes we need to work a little harder to find if we are experiencing um, root damage from rootworm feeding. Jay, you were on a cornfield this morning. Describe to us what you were finding in that field. Well, Ashley, <clears throat> before you arrived today, I was out getting dirty, uh, digging roots in a field in the neighborhood here. So it was outside of uh, Mankato. It was a long-term rotation of corn and soybeans on this particular field and this particular grower has utilized uh, above ground only protection against insects and corn uh, over the course of the last five to ten years and uh, we were called out to the field uh, a week ago because there was a significant amount of corn uh, corn lodging due to a windstorm that had gone through and as Ashley alluded to earlier, you know, uh, oftentimes if we don't have a wind event, we may not necessarily know, or farmers may not necessarily know that they've had significant rootworm uh, pressure. So I was able to go out and dig some plants from this field, exhibiting typical symptoms of what we would expect with an untraded product where there's significant rootworm pressure due to extended diapause. And uh, Ashley, I got wet and dirty washing these roots for you to be able to share to our viewers how you go about evaluating corn root injury from corn rootworm. So Ashley, maybe you can offer an explanation. Okay. Let's look at these roots. The first thing I want to ask you though, Jay, is, okay, here we sit, second week of July, we're able to see evident rootworm larvae feeding because the larvae have been present in the soil long enough to damage the roots and, and show us what the ultimate outcome would be. Now they're transitioning their life cycle to become adult beetles that emerge from the soil. But in between that, if a farmer is digging in their field before the larvae have, have really had a lot of root feeding activity, tell us how they might be able to find that rootworm larvae. So Ashley, that's an excellent question. I'm going to back up just a little bit because if, if we're tracking when we might expect to see first larval feeding from corn rootworm, it's when typically we see rootworm egg hatch occurring somewhere between about 650 and 800 groin degree units. And that's base 52, unlike corn, but typically that equates to, in my experience over the years, about mid-June, and typically then feeding will persist for roughly about four to six weeks. Not all the eggs hatch exactly at, at one time. And so um, were I to have been out in this field several weeks ago, I would have gone out and, and dug some uh, root balls from the field, making sure we have plenty of uh, soil on those roots and then soak them. As you can see here in the, some of the pictures I shot earlier, you can see that we have rootworm larvae have floated to the surface. We have seen actually some pupa and, and beetles, which are really indicating that right now, with the amount of beetles that happen to be in that root float, we're actually seeing uh, that we're probably towards the end of larval feeding, Ashley. So that's a long way of saying I would have done a corn rootworm float okay. to uh, evaluate what is out there for uh, larval pressure and larval populations. And unfortunately, there isn't anything a person could do at that time, say three or four weeks ago, had they discovered 
uh, heavy larval populations. Unfortunately, without selecting the proper trait, your options are limited. Okay, that's perfect, Jay. So now we fast forward rootworm larvae float no longer relevant because now we can dig here on the second week of July. We've had enough feeding. We can see what these rootworm larvae are going to do if you do have um, rootworm larvae pressure in your field. It's important to know what this looks like because corn can go down for different reasons. Um, maybe we have uh, a shallow root system because of um, impeded root penetration because of compaction. Um, maybe maybe we have other challenges to your root system or, or that, that hybrid in particular perhaps is, is challenged from a root strength perspective. Um, so there are other reasons why a, a corn hybrid can go down. So you want to make sure you're confident when you walk out and you see that down corn or you're troubleshooting ahead of a wind event and you can have corn with not a very big root system or a compromised root system that stands to the length of the season if the wind doesn't blow. Um, so you really want to make sure you know what you're looking at when you go out there, grab your shovel, head to that down spot in a field or head to a spot in your standing cornfield and try to preserve as much of the root ball as possible. Okay, you're digging around that root. You've got them cleaned off nice, just like Jay did here today. And we've then we're able to see this root system really nicely. And what we're looking for, um, you know, here is a, is a really nice root system. You see there's not much um, brown scarring on this root system here. Whereas if you look at this, this root system that has been compromised by rootworm larvae, you can see a lot of scarring on these roots. Um, you can see if you were able to zoom in and look at these, you would see pinholes where the larvae have penetrated that root. Um, and what we're looking at here is the feeding from that rootworm larvae before it's transitioned into a pupae, then an adult beetle. Uh, and all this feeding happens below ground in that larval stage. And to, to score this, you wouldn't necessarily have to score this, but um, as a farmer, um, to understand the potential yield implications of this feeding, you would look at these three main nodal roots uh, rings in your um, corn root system. And to get another visualization on that, if you have one of our 2025 memo books from your Pioneer sales rep, page 37 is going to give you an illustration of this. But as you look at that, a whole ring pruned within an inch and a half of the main stalk that typically results in about 15% yield loss. Depending on your soil moisture conditions subsequent to feeding, excess moisture can kind of bail you out of some intense feeding because that, that root system is still able to have access to nutrients and water, um, not as compromised as much as it would in a drier situation where it really needs that whole root mass. Um, so those are some things to think about. That's going to vary depending on the root that you dig and vary depending on the pockets in the field. Um, and Jay, we had discussed earlier, economic injury can begin at 0.25 um, of your total um, zero to three nodal injury scale score. But this root, I would hazard just an estimate. This is easily a two, um, probably between a two and a 2.5, um, resulting in significant yield loss in this example. What is assumed is that each ring of roots, typically there's about 10 individual roots per, per each ring. And so Ashley referred to the a 0.25 being the economic injury level. So in other words, if there were the equivalent of, say, two and a half <laughs> roots pruned within an inch and a half of that main stalk, that would be considered a 0.25. And that would be when you might begin to see an impact on yield. And as Ashley so well put it, that once you get one complete uh, ring, that's approximately a 15% reduction in yield. And that's not even factoring in whether or not that corn would be root lodged till the end of the season. In the case of this particular field, it bounced right back. It's standing straight up. And we're still probably uh, a week to 10 days away from it uh, tasseling. Uh, but Ashley, as, as you look at a field like this, so as I said to you, it's a uh, rotated long-term corn on corn. So the, uh, pardon me, corn bean rotation. So next year, the plan would be that they're going to be planting uh, corn. But in two years, so in 2027, they'll be planting corn back again on that field. So based on what you see on these roots, what would be your recommendation for 2027 as far as rootworm trait selection? Okay, so the next time that this field would be in corn, would love to see a traded product, a rootworm traded product. For us, you would look at a Vorseed and List hybrid. There you have the yield of a corn rootworm traded product that 
we didn't historically have years ago before rootworm tray offerings were optimized like Chrome or Voreseed and List, you might expect to see a little less yield from a corn on corn offering than you would a corn on soybean offering. Um, luckily, the industry has begun to correct that. So in the form of Chrome or Voreseed and List, you can have a, a yield optimized offering. You also have the flexibility with Voreseed and List of four different herbicide tolerances um, and then the protection of three modes of action for corn rootworm below ground. So it would definitely love to see a trait on that corn when you see rootworm feeding like this, despite the fact that it is going to be first year corn again, because in our area, we know that we have the extended diapause present in the nor northern corn rootworm population, where despite the fact that we rotate a year of soybeans and we can see pressure in that subsequent year. And, and that's something that we have to ground truth as farmers to understand what pressure we're seeing in our first year corn. So you can make um, economical decisions going forward in the subsequent year that it's corn. Jay, what else may a farmer be able to do? Well, Ashley, I, th I think we have a fairly extreme example here. You know, we, we easily have a two score. So I think the question is, at what point in time would you then pull the trigger? So this is extreme, it's an obvious, it's a no brainer. Okay, so at what point then should a farmer decide, we have this, uh, we have some feeding in a field. Okay, how bad does it need to be? And you share that 0.25 as far as a score, as far as being initial economic injury, you said when we get to a one or a full ring, you've got a 15% yield reduction in sale. As I look at it, and I think our guidance to farmers would, would likely be, if you are probably from a, a 0.5 to a 0.1 as far as root injury, in all likelihood, the following uh, year in the rotation uh, that a person should consider using a traded product such as for seed and list, Ashley. Perfect. And that's looking ahead to the next time that this field would be in corn, or if you're in a corn on corn rotation, then that becomes a little more um, frequent that we would we would plan to plant a treated product in that subsequent year of corn. But Jay, okay, you were floating these, you were cleaning off these roots today. You said you saw pupae that will soon then move into their adult beetle stage. What do you think about adult beetle management for this year? Well, as far as adult beetle management for this year, you know, that's, that's an excellent question, Ashley. And, and so as, as uh, farmers go out and evaluate their fields for presence of uh, corn rootworm adult beetles, uh, you know, some of the thresholds that, that are out there, if you begin to see, you know, between five and 10 beetles per plant and you find that the silks are being clipped within, you know, uh, within a, a half inch of the uh, husks, you could potentially have significant reduction in pollination due to silk clipping. And so some folks uh, may try to add a uh, insecticide in with their fungicide application, to potentially impact some of those adults. Uh, the challenge always is getting the perfect timing with regard to fungicide and the adult fetal control. Additionally, if a person is out scouting those fields for adult beetles, you can use that as well as a tool to guide your future decisions too. If it's a planned field to be corn on corn and you see on average one beetle per plant, that is sufficient for a person to need to use a traded product, um, say next year in 2026 on a given field. Or if you have five or more beetles per plant, that's telling us that's a high population and they can use that adult beetle count to determine their need for a traded product in 2027. Fantastic. Thank you, Jay. I think we've we've given a thorough description of what to look for, management tactics going forward. Of course, you you also have the option of soil applied insecticides, which is a, a larger conversation. Um, reach out to Jay, myself, your pioneer sales rep for more information about those considerations, management going forward. Um, and we have upcoming, Jay, our next iteration of planting knowledge growing success um, is looking at crop conditions. What else do we got, Jay? Well, we've got uh, that next uh, episode, uh, the next webinar talking about, um, you know, uh, late season evaluation, as well as, uh, you know, some of the yield prediction formulations. There's a lot of excitement, a lot of enthusiasm out there this year, Ashley, with how good the crop looks. So I think people are going to want to join us for that next video. So Absolutely. thank you very much for watching. Thank you. And join us on our, our next video at the same landing page you can find here. Be safe as you're scouting corn and reach out to your Pioneer sales rep if you have any questions. Thank you. Concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.